Hello everyone, it's Professor Fiction. After almost a year, we're returning to the S-Class scaling videos where we scale all the S-Class heroes. Last time we did Darkshine, and I was thinking about talking about Silver Fang or Flashy Flash, but I decided on Atomic Samurai, also known as Kamikaze, because, well, it seems like, it seems like he's done this arc. He needs some milk! But, in all seriousness, I've tried to get this video right since April of last year, but it just never felt right till now. And I'm glad I waited, because Atomic Samurai has gotten a large power-up and is way stronger than we could've expected. Well, stronger than I expected. See, Atomic Samurai has always been the subject of much debate and is probably the most contentious S-Class hero when it comes to power. I've seen people say he's stronger than Flashy Flash even with his recent feats, and people say he's not only weaker but also slower than Tank Top Master. No joke. Sandbag memes aside, my goal here is to not only provide what I believe to be an accurate and convincing assessment of Atomic Samurai's abilities, but also a general range at which where he could be, and hopefully phrase it in a way that you understand and agree with me. With all that in mind, let's get started. I think it's important to start by talking about Atomic Samurai students, Bushi Drill, Okama Itachi, and Iain. Bushi Drill is honestly pretty interesting to look into, mainly because he's actually the same age as Atomic. The data book explains that despite trading all day and night, Bushi Drill couldn't compete with Atomic and became his student. On top of that, despite being the same age as Atomic Samurai himself, both of his pupils are stronger than he is despite only being in their 20s. Bushi Drill admits that Okami Itachi's Air Blade, or Flying Sword depending on the translation you're using, is beyond his abilities to perform. And Iain is referred to as having the top level of speed among the disciples. So not only has Atomic Samurai far surpassed Bushi Drill individually, but raised two much younger students to surpass it as well. Which speaks a lot to Atomic Samurai's own potential as a swordsman, as well as his abilities as a teacher. On to Iain. I'll talk about him more in an in-depth video in the future, but I'll sum up his major feats right now. Early in the series, we see the alien invader Melzagard, who can easily destroy the Sky King and his entire tribe, and even considered them bug-like. Sky King is described by one to be around the level of Deep Sea King, which is also narratively supported by the implied rivalry between them. Iain is then able to react to and dodge attacks from Melzagard at point-blank range, and even when Melzagard gets more serious, though the attack does take off his arm, Iain is still able to react and move most of his body out of the way. Iain trains further, as explained in both the Season 2 OVA and given his nature as a student who is still in training, it only makes sense that he'd be getting stronger over time. During the Monster Association raid, he's able to physically stop the demon level monster Rhino Wrestler and impressed him way more than any of the other nearby A-class heroes even when they ganged up on him. He's then able to, at one point, intercept a Mai Mask during the fight with Doe S. He's then able to somewhat defend against evil natural water, however this seems to be in his weakest state and may only be considered level dragon due to its ability or some other attribute. As we see later when Child Emperor fights Evil Natural Water, he goes from being able to react to a surprise attack to getting blitzed when he's fully on guard. So it's possible that Evil Natural Water, who is extremely intelligent, was not at full power and was toying with the heroes. Evil Natural Water as one of the executives is considered superior to Hero Hunter Garo, as stated by Phoenix Man, and above Royal Ripper and Bug God who are relative to that Garo. So if you think Iain even remotely defended against a full power evil natural water, it's pretty impressive. Iain being around human Garo's level is actually very consistent actually. As we see, he and Spring Mustachio move at roughly the same speed against Homeless Emperor. Spring Mustachio was considered by Garo to be a good fight had they been on equal terms, and is stronger than Golden Ball who could puncture holes in Garo's leg. 
Garo had obviously defeated Tank Top Master at this point, however, Eind admits that he's still not quite on par with the S Class. This is still an S Class level feat, as the three A Class heroes, Blue Fire, Heavy Tank Loincloth, and Magic Trick Man, are all stated S Class level in combat ability, and Garo destroyed them but thinks that Spring Mustachio would still be a good fight. So, like, imagine that Eiyan can, like, be S Class level. It's just that all the actual S-Class heroes are far above the minimum requirements to be S-Class level, if that makes sense. To clarify, I'm not saying he's actually equal to Garo or anything like that, just that he is somewhat of a relevant challenge for Garo, and Garo would be more than likely to acknowledge his abilities. Now that we've established that Eiyan is pretty strong in his own right, we need to establish how much stronger Atomic Samurai is. After Eiyan fails to cut Rhino Wrestler's horn at all, like he can't even scratch it, Kamikaze Perception blitzes and reduces him and his horn to pieces. Then we have Haragiri, who as a human is one of the five members of the Council of Swordsmen, the greatest swordsman in the world which includes Eiyan and Spring Mustachio. He then becomes a monster, which we know is a pretty significant amp. Haragiri himself suggests that he has gotten an amp as well, so even if you say it's like an unquantifiable amp, he is still stronger than when he was still one of the top five swordsmen in the world. Haragiri is also entrusted with monster cells and recruiting the other Council of Swordsmen members to join the Monster Association, something that only cadres like Nayan and Goketsu were sent to do by Giragiro. It's possible that Haragiri is one of the Monster Association cadres, and thus would scale above Human Garo, Bug God, Royal Ripper, and the other demons in the Monster Association. Which is pretty consistent, seeing as basically, he's a much stronger version of Eiyan, who could already give Human Garo a challenge more than likely. Even with his sword inches away from Kamikaze's face, Atomic Samurai can intercept Hatagiri and reduce him to pieces. It's basically as bad of a blitz as you get. This obviously puts Atomic Samurai way above Eiyan, but possibly even higher if Hatagiri is actually one of the Dragon level executives of the Monster Association. If that's the case, this is a pretty insane feat, as Atomic Samurai would be able to replicate this against any of the lower ranked demon level monsters of the association, including Bug God, Doe S, Devil Longhair, and Royal Ripper. It also means that Garo, who could destroy Tank Top Master and Metal Bat mainly using speed, as well as could take blows from base Silver Fang and post G4 Genos even in a heavily weakened state, would get done similarly to Hatagiri. Supporting this is a statement from Darkshine in which he states that post Orochi Garo would get blitzed and destroyed by Atomic Samurai before he can even use his techniques. Garo adapts to and can tank point blank blasts from Overgrown Rover, which can even cause Silver Fang to be a little concerned. This Garo was barely damaged after a casual punch from Darkshine, which just prior to this, literally popped Bug God like a balloon. There's an alternate interpretation to this statement, which is that Darkshine was referring to if Garo challenged Atomic Samurai during his hero hunting days, back when he was still fully human, rather than currently when he challenged Puri Puri Prisoner and Darkshine. I do believe that both interpretations have their merit, however I'd lean more towards Darkshine meaning currently, seeing as he is more intimately aware of Garo's strength level now, since he fought him, whereas before he just vaguely knows he beat some S-Class heroes. For all Darkshine knows, half monster Garo is just as strong as when he fought Tank Top Master, which seems to be enforced by the fact that he's surprised later that Garo is growing in power and speed. Even using that second interpretation, it implies that to Darkshine, Atomic Samurai is one of the higher end heroes and would be above Metal Bat and Tank Top Master anyway, and he doesn't even mention heroes like Pig God or Drive Knight. Then we get to the Psycho Sorochi fusion fight, where all the S class gang up on Orochi. Atomic Samurai is able to split up a beam fired from Orochi. These blasts could match blasts from Drive Knight after he'd absorbed energy from an entire city, 
and even destroy his aircraft form with a single direct hit and later rip his bishop form off of his body. He then creates a new move, the Atomic Beeline Slash, which is simply a concentrated and more focused Atomic Slash, not to be confused with the actual focused Atomic Slash. That's a different move, which got redrawn and seems to function slightly differently, but we'll talk about that later. After this, he, alongside Nichiren, blitz Vomit Fear Ugly. This is actually pretty impressive, seeing as right before this, Fear Ugly reacts to and intercepts Darkshine's Super Alloy Bazooka, which supports him being above half Monster Garo. Darkshine, during his fight against Garo, his tackle was too fast for Garo to dodge, and he resorted to using the Water Stream. A few other feats of note, Kamikaze easily destroys the Robot G5, at least his outer shell that is. Not only was this a more advanced version of the G4 robot that fought Genos, but it was so strong that Child Emperor thought that fighting it would be drawn out and leave him out of gadgets. Child Emperor can react to jet strings from Evil Natural Water, but also easily destroyed base Phoenix Man, who just by flapping his wings sent Bomb, Bang, and Genos all flying backwards. This is obviously without Brave Giant, since Child Emperor was reserving it as a last resort, but G5 being around normal Child Emperor without Brave Giant is still pretty impressive. He then improves his own technique by watching Atomic Samurai's moves, yet still gets destroyed by Kamikaze easily. Supporting Kamikaze being over Child Emperor, we later see him deflecting jet streams from Evil Natural Water. These jet streams are stated by Eiyan to be even stronger than when Child Emperor fought him, and at the time Child Emperor considered a single jet stream to be lethal. Once Evil Natural Water powered up even more, the jet streams could tag Child Emperor and go right through his leg, and instantly destroy his weird, like, ice machine. With all these feats and statements in mind, I think it's pretty consistent that Atomic Samurai, without the Sunblade mind you, is at the very bare minimum significantly stronger and faster than Hugh and Garo when he fights Metal Bat and the other heroes, if not being above half Monster Garo when he fights Darkshine later. Not his final form at the end of that fight, but his half monster self after he wakes up, or after he fights Orochi. All these Garo forms get so confusing. What the hell is even that? As for the Black S fight, this is not an anti-feat for Atomic Samurai in any way. Black S himself has no real anti-feats on his own and doesn't really fight conventionally anyway. Like, yes, Eiyan or Spring Mustachio can cleave through Black S clones, but could they beat all of them? Probably not. Kamikaze himself could easily slash through hundreds of Black S clones, but just gets overwhelmed by numbers, which even Silver Fang seems to be struggling with. Even Homeless Emperor wanted to create a plan to deal with Black S, so he's never really depicted as weak in any way. Black S even comments that Atomic Samurai would be weak to his fighting style, and Psychos planned it out specifically for Black S to fight Atomic Samurai, so it's not necessarily indicative of actual strength. Another controversial statement is the databook statement, which refers to Atomic Samurai as the strongest swordsman in the world. People will immediately use this to compare him to Flashy Flash, who, as we know, has impressive feats against Platinum S and current Garo. While I do have my own opinion on this, and I'd like to go into it in more depth in a future video, I'll actually be talking about Atomic Samurai vs Flashy Flash later on, I think it's generally agreed upon that if Atomic Samurai is stronger than Flashy Flash, it would actually just downplay Flashy Flash. As we already know, Atomic Samurai could be hurt pretty badly by much lesser forms of Black S. As well, his Atomic Slash was pretty much useless against Vomit Fear Ugly's Acid. Let alone Platinum S, which is many times stronger than either Black S or Vomit Fear Ugly. Seeing as even an inferior fusion of Golden S could beat Vomit Fear Ugly pretty badly. If you still wanted to use the statement, you'd basically just have to say that Garo and Platinum S would be suppressed, because Atomic would just not be able to keep up with them, unfortunately, but he would not. So like I said, Atomic Samurai at base should be stronger than half Monster Garo before evolving against Darkshine. Later on, Golden S and Homeless Emperor show up. 
two monsters who can easily dismantle Vomit Kira Ugly, who himself melted Atomic Samurai's sword, and could match Darkshine's Super Alloy Double Bazooka, an attack which could damage Garo mid-evolution after fighting Darkshine. Darkshine even admits that Golden S has much larger muscles than he does, and Golden S one-shots him with one punch. So, it's very implied that Golden S and Homeless Emperor are relative top tiers to the surrounding characters, which even Giro Giro notes for their ability to potentially beat anyone if they work together, including a suppressed Tatsumaki who just thrashed the Giro Giro puppet. Atomic Samurai then gets the Sunblade, an ancient sword created on a different continent which sunk thousands of years ago, and is revealed to be the true goal of the Council of Swordmasters to find both the Sunblade and the Moonblade. The reason Nichiren, the one who carried the blade, never drew it was because the sword only responds to a worthy spirit, which means he clearly wasn't worthy. Attempting to draw the sword, Atomic Samurai reached a level of concentration which even blocked out the surrounding Homeless Emperor explosions, which allowed him to use the Sunblade. Using it, he easily cuts apart Homeless Emperor's light balls and could make cuts in Golden S. Golden S even compares the amp Kamikaze receives to a monsterization, as he literally fuses with the sword and he refers to it as assimilation. This pretty definitively puts Atomic Samurai over Fear Ugly, and he would have killed Homeless Emperor if Golden S hadn't interfered, and even then he can cut Golden S's arm off. It's debatable whether or not he could beat Golden S in a straight 1v1 matchup, as Golden S was still fast enough to intercept him, but he can blatantly overcome his durability, which Fear Ugly could not do, even with the same acid which melted Kamikaze's old sword. So, Atomic Samurai with the Sunblade is pretty, pretty much around Golden S in terms of strength and speed, and he would probably beat Homeless Emperor and Vomit Fear Ugly in a straight-up fight, though I think Golden S versus Atomic Samurai is still pretty debatable. Lastly, I wanted to talk about Atomic Samurai's skills and other odd abilities, since swordsmanship is a pretty defining attribute of his character. Firstly, one power that most of the skilled, disciplined cast of characters, like Garo, Bang, and Flashy Flash, Atomic Samurai and all of his disciples can sense killing intent or murderous intention from monsters and people. Kamikaze demonstrated this when he noticed Flashy Flash's murderous aura directed at Amai Mask, and the disciples used it against Devil Longhair to predict his omnidirectional hair attacks despite fighting with their eyes closed. It's also explained that when Eiyan releases his bloodlust, that normal monsters are paralyzed with fear, which implies that having enough bloodlust can equate to some kind of fear hacks in One Punch Man. Though this may just be like a weird hyperbole and doesn't really matter seeing as we've never seen how effective it is, still something I thought I'd note. In terms of sword skills, we're gonna go back to Iain and Okame Itachi again. Seeing as they are his pupils, he's probably capable of most of the sword techniques they use and he presumably taught them, and as the master he's more than likely more skilled than them. Iain is a master of Aido, which is basically drawing the sword and cutting in the same motion, without getting all neckbeardy and nerdy about Japanese sword lore. Using his main technique, the Killer Aido, he's able to target vital points multiple times over. Okama Itachi uses the air blade we talked about earlier, which Bushi Drill in all his years of training day and night could never learn yet Atomic Samurai could use it as seen against G5 and Psycho Sorochi. This also means Atomic Samurai has a unique ranged technique to use in versus battles and stuff. You then have Atomic Samurai himself with his famous Atomic Slash, which the data book describes as an unparalleled slash, which only Atomic Samurai can perform seeing as he has mastered the way of the sword, quote unquote. This means in terms of skill, He's basically the best swordsman in the verse, possibly including Flashy Flash. He then has his Atomic Beeline Slash, which rather than cutting the opponent 100 times, concentrates the 100 slashes into one more focused beam to do more damage. The data book even states that his slashes can break down atoms, which is a pretty insane level of precision, seeing as you can't even see individual atoms without tools. 
In versus battles, this may give Atomic Samurai some level of durability negation, seeing as most characters in fiction don't have defense on an atomic level like that. But I don't really want to get into that all too much, especially seeing as this may just be hyperbole, since Atomic Samurai usually just reduces his opponents into chunks rather than wasting them away to nothing. Anyway, that sums up Atomic Samurai. I hope I managed to clear up all confusion on his level of strength and you got to look at him in a different light, as I think he's pretty underrated all things considered. If you guys want to see more videos about the S-Class, like I said, I'm working on a Atomic Samurai vs. Flashy Flash video, as well as an, a Flashy Flash and Silver Fang video, which I plan on doing one on each S-Class. Please subscribe and hit the bell icon so you are notified when those videos come out. I would really appreciate it. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.